Yes, hi everyone. Welcome to another episode of Oscar Outdoors. In today's video, I'm going to talk to you about a comparison between the Snugback all which at the G1 and the G2. Welcome back everyone. Uh, first of all, let me just tell you about how I store my all weather shelters. I'll just get rid of that one a second. Uh, so this is the G1 in my green snug pack dry bag. Uh, small size, but because I keep my ridge lines and guy routes and everything else like that attached, um, you need a little bit more space than the stuff sack that it comes with provides. So yeah, this is how I store them. Obviously it gives you a little bit of extra water protection as well. Um, so you can store it on the outside of your pack. Right, let's get to the um, comparison. So I'm going to do this. Is This is the G1. I'm going to talk to you through the G1 and then the obvious differences that I've noticed uh, with the G2. Okay, so I'll just take this peg out. Right, so the corner tabs. So you can see on the top side, this is being your waterproof side or your outside. Okay, you can see the webbing tabs here coming down to the corner, looped over and then running back on itself on the, the tab. It does add a lot of strength and you can see it's got a, a really good thick line of stitching. Okay, and then obviously the metal eyelet, a, a single line of stitching here. Okay, and then double line stitched going off the corners and same in the opposite direction. It does have these plastic multi-tabs as well, I don't know what these are called, They're little pre Preston type things, but... Yeah, on the underside, and you can see it's almost like a waxy coated finish. And then obviously a simple eyelet again, the male side of the press stud there. And then obviously you can see that it's like a, a square patterned um, tarp, or diamond tarp type thing on this side. So that's the corner tie out point on the G1. Just moving up to the next tie out point along. Uh, going on the outside edge uh, you come to this one again these are my addition don't expect to see them webbing comes down you can see that it's quite heavily stitched across here i'm going off into a triangle single stitch in there a double stitching coming along the seam and then double stitching there running along the seam of what i'm going to call the wing of the tarp when you set it up in diamond obviously these are the two points in this corners that you'll uh, peg out but yeah on the underside you can see just a single point of webbing there really really thick stitching again running along the seam uh, again my addition uh, an extra triangle of tarp all in there single stitched to the uh, main one and then tape seamed or seam tape should I say and double stitched running along that seam again. Sticking in this corner, you'll uh, see this is the tab I was just talking about here. And in my left hand is the actual corner tab. I fold this back, bring you in a little bit closer. Okay, this is like the, the wing that I was just talking about here. Double stitched all the way along and then seam taped as well okay, again this waxy coating and then these little plastic press studs whatever they're called running sort of every sort of 12 to 14 inches by the look of it so we're now at the corner of the ridge line so the ridge line corner here again the webbing coming all the way on both sides one piece of webbing stitched and folded so that it creates a loop on this end quite thickly stitched with the eyelet zoom you in a bit okay and then this is your ridge line then where your centre tab will go so double stitched again and seam taped again with one of these plastic eyelets uh, sorry plastic pressed things on the outside of the G1 this is the webbing tab for the ridge line 
Okay, you can just see that it's been reinforced, stitched over the double stitching of like the two pieces of fabric that form the tarp. And then uh, again, like I said, just reinforced stitch print over there, leaving you a webbing tab. So you, your ridge line can run straight through the centre of that, like so. Okay, so on the inside of the webbing tab that I've just been talking about, this is what you'll find. So you can see here is the reinforced stitching and then double stitching going off in either direction. Seam taped and this is, like I said, where your webbing point will be attached. Okay, now I'm just going to get out the G2 and lay it out in the exact same formation as the G1. Just bear with me. Right, so I've quickly laid out the G2 um, directly over the top of the G1. And uh, brought, bring you in quite close for comparison. So I'll just remove the peg again. You see both types are here. So already you can see that there's, there's a difference in colour. I don't know if it shows up pretty well on camera. Let's try that. Yeah, you can see there's a difference in colour. The G2 is really quite darker. So that's one thing that I really do like as well because it, it gives you a little bit more camouflage as well. Blends mo in more to sort of the British terrain. I do like that. Right, I'll zoom you back out a little bit. But yeah, um, again, bobbles I've already added on. If you've not watched my video on the G2 already, um, I'll leave a link or I'll flash them on the screen now if I can uh, to go and watch that video. So yeah, the G1 we've already shown you. Uh, it's just a sim quite simply folded over corner piece with the webbing folded in such a way that it creates a loop on the end. Uh, a ring eyelet there. And then obviously this plastic press stud thing just there. Okay, and again, uh, waxy coating on the underside. Now the G2 in comparison, reinforced on the corner. Got like an extra layer of material put onto here. Single webbing tab running from the edge of the, the bit, new bits of material all the way up, single stitch on the seam, and then come to a triangle point at the end of the webbing, creating your webbing loop off the end there. The metal eyelet, again, in situ, but that's the comparison of your corners. Again, you'll notice that the plastic press stud is missing. I really do like this feature though. It's good for uh, tidying up, and uh, obviously with different type configurations. So. Right, we'll move on. Right, moving on to the next tab. Uh, the G1 on the underside this time. G2 on the outside. So again, you can see here the, on the G1, uh, we're at the, at the exact same point. And we've got a small triangle coming in from maybe about an inch and a half, compared to probably three inches in on the G2. So it's going already a stronger, sturdier point. Okay, and then obviously double stitching going off there to what I called the wing earlier. Double stitching here, going off to the wing where you peg out just here in the corner. So yeah, reinforced stitching on the webbing tab on the G1. And the webbing tab there just stitched in line with the double stitching going off on the tap, uh, tap material there. And the extra triangle of material folded over and single stitched on the seam. The G2 in comparison. Again, they've added this little bit of uh, additional material here. Um, it's like a different style of tarpaulin, not from the same material as either of these. Double stitched on the seam still, going this way. But the webbing this time, again, you've got the tab coming all the way to the, like almost to the tip of this extra bit. Single stitched around the edges. Okay, and double stitched across the seam. And obviously creating your loop there. So it comes in a little bit further giving you a little bit more strength and a little bit more security as well. So yeah, that's the next tie-up point. Right, so moving on to what I called the wing earlier. This is the G1 with the seam tape going across and then double stitched. Little triangular point folded in the corner and this is the ones that we've just literally been talking about here. But yeah, the, the wing tip going across here, seam taped on the G2, double stitched again reinforced at the, at the corner points so yeah G1 and G2 right moving on to the corner point for the ridge line you can see this is the ridge line running off okay we'll remove your peg okay we'll quickly fold that back out of the way so this is your G1 again one of the plastic press studs webbing in the corner um, overly stitched 
on this side, single stitched here and an eyelet. We'll bring the G2 back in. Now you can see double stitched on the outer seams, double stitched down the centre seam, single stitched across here and an eyelet. Now the underside, okay so this is the underside of the G1, again plastic press stud, webbing retainers there and a single eyelet. And that's it, when we come to the G2, for comparison, we've got extra layer of material as we've already discussed. Uh, single stitching on this webbing point, all the way up to a triangle point here. Okay, double stitch to the seams, and just certainly more reinforced and more durable. Okay, so moving on to the inside of the ridgeline tie-out points. This is the G1, with just the double stitching running along. Reinforced stitching where the webbing is attached on the outside and then obviously seam taped along the edge Okay, the G2 in comparison So here the G2 in comparison you can see that we've got like an additional square Added in here of material. This is on the underside. Remember this is what you'll be looking at if you were laying your hammock Seam taped again going off in triangle point to form a square Seam taped down the center double stitched and then really reinforced where the webbing point attaches. So again, this is like the outside now, which is the inside of the, sorry, outside of the G1, from the inside view that we've just shown you. So you have the webbing tab, and then obviously just reinforced stitched over the double stitching that's already in situ. Now I'll just reintroduce the G2. Okay, so we reintroduce now the G2. And you can see, as I said before, this is that extra square of stitching that I was talking about going around with the double stitching running through and then over the top of the webbing tab that's been folded this time to create a loop so that it's easier to twist as well into A and diamond formation but yeah going all the way through so yeah that's the ridge line webbing points right so this has been a quick look at a comparison between the G1 and the G2 all weather shelter from Snugpack the uh, G1 did get a lot of slating in the past, uh, you know, saying that it was a bit too flimsy, ripping at seams, you know, uh, not seam tape well enough, stitching coming undone, that sort of thing. So Snugpack went away, redesigned it, and then came up with the G2. Now, you can see where, where I've compared them. They have put a lot more thought and a lot more detail into, like, the stitching and then the corner points and then how they've attached the webbing and things like that. But one thing I'm quite disappointed in is the fact that these, I don't know what they call them, what do they call them? Plastic snaps, um, plastic press studs, whatever. These are missing from the G2. And I really do like the versatility that this offers you. Um, not only for storage, obviously you can fold it up a lot easier and keep it square a lot better. Um, but when you're making different tarp shelters and things like that as well, I, I miss the versatility that this has been offered um, but yeah I think the G2 is going to serve me a lot better than what the G1 has although the G1 has been faultless and seamless for me um, it must have just been a bad batch that they came across but the G2 does look reinforced a lot more well designed um, just missing the plastic press goods which um, I've had a look on other videos on YouTube and I think I'm going to try and add them in myself so I'll let you know how that goes and bring you back for that video Okay, so this has been my comparison video of the Snug Pack or Weber Shelters G1 and G2. If you've liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Comment in the description box below, let me know what you think about the, uh, the differences that Snug Pack have made to the All Weber Shelter. If you've used either the G1 or the G2. Uh, let me know if you've used both and let me know if you prefer, which one you prefer. Uh, but yeah, if you, don't forget, if you're not already, please subscribe to the channel. And for more videos like this, Click on one of the links here or the icon here to subscribe to the channel. See you in the next one.